Ski Stage 3 Level 5 work based on the National Curriculum Level Descriptors. Moving on to handling data. To interpret pie charts. So we've got a pie chart here cut into sectors and we have questions about this. What fraction is coloured in red? Well that's a quarter. What fraction is coloured in blue? Now if we look at this carefully we can see this section is cut into three parts. So that's three, six, nine, twelve parts. So that is actually one twelfth. What fraction is coloured in green? Well if that's one twelfth that must be two twelfths which will cancel to a sixth. What fraction is coloured in that rather horrible looking yellow? That's a half. What about what percentage? Well what percentage is coloured in there is a quarter is 25%. A twelfth. Now what's a twelfth? So we've got to do 12 into 100, haven't we? Or what we could do is to cut the 25 into three parts. Either answer would be the same. So let's do this one. Three into that goes eight, a 24, and a third. So that's eight and a third percent. What is percentages in green? Well, it's double that, which is 16 and two-thirds percent. What is yellow? That's 50 percent. Red and blue. Red and blue. This is the part round here. This is 90 degrees. This is 30 degrees. So that's 120 degrees. That's actually a third of all the way round. And a third is 33 and a third percent. Being able to interpret pie charts. Find the mean from a frequency table. So this is what we mean by frequency table. Let's suppose this is a test and the score is up to five. So people scored naught and two of them did. Two scored one, six scored two, eight scored three, five scored four and three scored five. If we add up this column, we find how many people took this test. So that's 8, 16, 16, 26, 27, 28. So the mean is the total divided by how many? So at the moment we've worked out the 28, which is the how many. Now we've got to work out the total. In other words, the total score awarded altogether. Well, if two people scored naught, then two multiplied by naught is the score there. Four people scored one, so four multiplied by one is the total score there. Six scored two, so six times two is the total scores there. Eight times three, that will give you the total score there. Five times four, will give the total number of points scored there and 3 times 15 3 times 5 which is 15 will give the total scored there in other words adding this column up works out the total scored altogether by the 28 young people 6, 10, 15 carries 1 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so the mean is 75 divided by 28 which we would use a calculator for. 75 divided by 28. And the calculator gives an answer of 2.67857, so we just call it 2.7 to two significant figures. Calculating the mean from a frequency table. Comparing data using averages on the range. 
Now we've got a situation where in a game, David's scores were... So in a particular game, these were David's scores over a period of time. In a game, Glenn's scores were, and this was Glenn's scores over a period of time. Who would you choose in your team and why? So one way of looking at it is to see who scores the best average or the best mean. So we're going to add them up and divide by how many there are. So let's do this first. 9, 13, 23, 26, 30, 39, 40, 50. So it adds up to 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So David's mean is 5. Let's look at Glenn. Add them up. 11, 15, 20, 30, 35. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, that's not a lot of help because they both score the same when it comes to an average. Well, let's look at uh, David's range. Now, the range is the largest score minus the smallest score. So David's range is 9. Let's look at Glenn's range. The range is the largest score minus the smallest score. So, what we can say here is that Glenn is more consistent because his scores are tighter packed and his range is smaller. So in this particular case, their means are the same, so there's no way to choose between them there. But if we want a consistent player, we choose Glenn, because his range is smaller, and his results are tighter packed. But there again, if it's an extremely important game that we must win, we might gamble on David, because on the odd occasion, he scores very well. So several arguments here. There's no actually a right or wrong answer to this sort of question. It's an argument you put forward. I mean, if the means had worked out different, and David's mean had worked out higher, you still might choose Glenn because he's more consistent. So there's no right or wrong answer to this type of question. You just put forward an argument based on the information you have. Using the probability scale of 0 to 1. So all probability is between 0 to 1. It can't be more than 1, which is dead certain. It can't be less than 0. 0 is impossible. So here's some examples. Put an arrow and a letter on the probability scale for these. A head when throwing a coin. Well, that's a probability of a half or evens. A club when cutting a pack of cards. Where a quarter of the pack of cards is clubs, therefore one in four is the chance of picking a club when you cut the pack of cards. Rolling a dice. There are six faces on the dice. They're equally likely. Therefore the probability of getting a five is one out of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's cut it into six places. Therefore that's C. A seven when throwing a dice. Well, that's an impossibility. But we can still show it on the probability scale by indicating probability of naught. Christmas Day is on the 25th of December. Well, that's a dead cert. It definitely always happens. Therefore, we can show that on the probability scale. Be able to use a probability scale between naught and one.